Hey guys, today is Monday, August 24th. It's 2.23 p.m. and the temperature is 29 degrees Celsius. I'm on Lawrence Avenue East, about to turn into the Edwards Gardens Botanical Garden parking lot. And from here, I'll hop onto the Wilkett Creek Recreational Trail and take that south and down to Sunnybrook Park, where I'm hoping to find my way out to Broadview Avenue in Midtown Toronto so I can find my way home. This isn't a route I've taken too many times and none in recent memory, so I'm hoping I can navigate my way through here. And here's where the trail begins, Wilkett Creek Recreational Trail. It says dismount bicycle through access path. I'm assuming they're referring to this part of the path here. So let's be good and follow the rules. Even though I found my way from the bridle path north up this path and into Edwards Gardens about half an hour ago, I didn't see any signs instructing cyclists to dismount. So this would be Wilkett Creek I'm passing over right now. And I think I'm probably good to hop on my bike from here on. And if I see anyone, I'll just be extra careful. Edwards Gardens is closed to cyclists, so you do have to walk your bike through it. And this area here is just to the northeast of Midtown Toronto. Thank you. And if I were to continue south all the way on this trail, this will hook up with the Don River Trail. Which will eventually take you all the way down to the lakefront. Just to the right of here, which is to the west, is the Bridal Path, which is the richest neighborhood in Toronto. There's a lot of 15, 20, and even 30 and 40 million dollar mansions there. I just did a bike ride through there, so I thought I would record this ride leading out of the area. Normally you'd pass on the left, but that couple was already well to the left. And I don't think this ride to get to Broadview Avenue is actually going to take very long. Might only take 10 minutes or so. As Broadview is north of Eglinton Avenue, and where we started was just south of, or I did start on Lawrence Avenue. Certainly a very scenic and pretty route.
Thank you. There's no, no need to hightail it through here. This is certainly one of the more enjoyable trails in Toronto and I don't know why I don't utilize this more often since I live so close. I tend to mostly just head south of where I live. And it's really, really hot outside of this ravine, but down in here, it's quite cool and nice, actually. Yeah, like you don't have to sit like... And at some point we'll be entering Sunnybrook Park. I think you'll find cricket pitches there, if I'm not mistaken, and a whole host of other not so common type sports fields. The sign says Sunnybrook Park to the right. Serena Gundy Park to the left, sports fields and pavilion to the right. Maybe I'll get lucky and there'll be some signs that guide me towards Broadview Avenue. Because once I'm on there, it's pretty much a straight shot towards Junk Street. At some point, I need to make a left. I remember that much. It might even be here, but. I thought it might be a little more fun not checking the route out ahead of time. If I get lost, I get lost. There's a horseback riding sign. And what looks like a trail off to the left here. It's the entrance to Sunnybrook Park, so hopefully I didn't miss my turn off. And if my sense of direction is holding up, we are currently traveling west. So the Wilkett Creek recreational trail part of this ride was incredibly short-lived, even though I might just end up making that the title of the video.
and I'm quite sure I missed my turn because I seem to be winding back up to the north here. I'm going to cheat and catch my bearings here. And I missed it by a long shot. So we're going to head back and go to Serena Gundy Park. Serves me right for having no idea what I'm doing. It's all part of the fun. And this wouldn't be my first time getting into a bit of a tangle down in this part. Wow, did I ever overshoot it. I think this is the turn way up here. I do recall there's some mountain or a mountain mountain <laughs> mountain biking trails through there. It looks like that's one of them. Serena Gundy Park. So this is where apparently I should have turned the first time. Ashland. Cyclists dismount. It would be nice if they had that dismount sign at the start of the bridge. At least we get a nice view out of it.
there's a look in that direction, whichever way that is. And hopefully this takes me somewhere familiar. Let's find out. Hmm, a fork in the road. So I believe I want to make a left and then a left. My phone was showing me the map upside down for some reason. Or not. And this just takes us up to a field. We're in trouble. <laughs> There's a public washroom. We are still in Serena Gundy Park. Bit of a hill climb. Look at this monster of a house waiting for us. And here we go. Broadview Avenue. So this is running parallel to Eglinton Avenue. Should just be a few blocks north of it.
So this should be Bayview Avenue is the next major street coming up. And then Mount Pleasant and then Young Street. And if memory serves me right, it's a bit of a hilly street. There might even be one of those roundabout style traffic circles at some point. And it's so hot and I've been out for so long that my water bottle has started to make the water taste like warm plastic. If you've ever drinking from a hot plastic water bottle, I'm sure you know how nice and refreshing that taste is. I think a well-deserved cold beverage on the balcony is in order after this ride. Followed by a shower. Followed by possibly another cold beverage. Then maybe I'll give myself the rest of the afternoon and evening off. I was planning on riding out to Tommy Thompson yesterday, but my plans got in the way of that. I couldn't quite do that early in the morning as I planned. And I was thinking about redoing my ride to Mississauga today, but I ended up riding my bike everywhere yesterday, just for social meetings. And I ended up burning myself out pretty good, so I didn't want to push it too hard. So I decided to do an exploratory ride up through the bridle path, which may or may not be uploaded by the time you see this. It always depends on how the video turns out. And you might not even see this ride. And here we go, it's steadily uphill for a while. I seem to be riding straight into the only breeze that there is. This neighborhood is just south of the Affluent Lawrence Park neighborhood. It might be called Sunnybrook Mills Creek or something to that effect. I'd wager to bet most of these houses the older ones go back from the early 1900s, probably around 1910 up until about 1940. And most of the larger newer homes are probably well north of $2 million. And this is Bayview. And even though I didn't ride too much today, I think the needle is on empty right now. Maybe I should invest in an e-bike. That might be a little too easy though. My channel might evolve into 100% e-bike rides. Here's where the new new-ish Whole Foods is at Bayview and Broadview. Remember just a few years ago, that building was just a hole in the ground. And there's a look at some of the new towers popping up in Midtown in the Young and Eglinton neighborhood straight ahead. And just to the south of here is the Lee Side neighborhood. Here we go, I knew I wasn't crazy. 
Here's a traffic circle. Something that really only works on a quieter single lane street like this. You'd need a much bigger circle for a busier street and it's not really something that's caught on in North America. I've seen them in some large Asian cities. I can think of one in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam where, oh, here's a stop sign. So it's not really a, I figure it would be yield signs all around. But I saw one in Ho Chi Minh that was kind of ridiculous. It was just about 10 to 15 motorbikes wide and what seemed to be an endless circle. And of course it was a pedestrian crossing too. And what's neat about there is they don't have too many proper crosswalks for pedestrians. You just kind of walk at your own risk and you'll notice a lot of the locals just start walking across the street at a steady pace. And those on motorbikes and scooters just kind of veer around them. The worst thing you could do is be inconsistent over there and hesitant. You just kind of have to go and trust that everyone's going to see you and go around you. The local traffic is certainly well tuned to doing that. And the same goes true in the Philippines, Indonesia, Cambodia, to a much lesser extent, Thailand. They're more likely to run you over in my experience. I don't know why I started talking about how to cross the road in other countries. So this should be Mount Pleasant at the lights here. It would have been easier if I found my way down to Avenue or Eglinton. There'd be a lot less going up and back down again. But I can't recall the last time if I've ever shown this part of Broadview Avenue on this channel before. I don't want to be to the right of a right turning vehicle. That's why I'm way out here to the left. As long as she actually is turning right, I should be okay. And man, that sun is bearing down pretty good. Some of these apartment buildings in Midtown are actually relatively affordable compared to the cost of renting one of these condos. The 
here's Toronto Collegiate Institute on the left. And that car was waiting to pass me for quite a while. And here is Young Street. We got 12 seconds on the timer, so we'll be cutting it close. Ah, we should be good. Barely. All right, I'm just gonna call this a ride here. Thanks for watching. There's links to Instagram and Patreon in the description. Sorry for having yet another adventure on the BC Clit. Thanks again, I'll catch you in the next one.